Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We've got a brilliant ball pup on test this week, the surprisingly affordable Cometer Orion BP. But before that, we're back out controlling farmyard pests. Right, we're out on the farmyard today and the weather feels really thundery. We've had a few spots of rain already and in fact it is trying to rain now but if we do get a proper storm there is plenty of cover here that we can run for. Now when we drove in quite a few collared doves lifted off one of the silage clamps so there is some quarry about. Also I've no doubt that the resident feral pigeons are probably still in the cattle sheds, certainly a few of them anyway. So, what we'll do is we'll have a bit of a walk around and see what we can find. Farm buildings provide useful cover as you make your way around the yard. Peeping around the corner of this shed, it appears that we're in luck, as a collared dove has pitched in despite all the talking at the outset. Well, that is a great start. Turns out one of the doves had already come back to that clamp and it's got us off the mark very quickly. It's great to get a result so early in the session, but I'm confident that there's plenty more action to be had here. So I make my way on around the buildings, remembering to check up in the rafters for feral pigeons as I go along. I soon clock another collared dove, so I place the shot one down to ready myself for the shot. You can see livestock in the background from the camera angle, but the backdrop is safe from my shooting position. With another bird accounted for, I walk in to make the retrieve. I want to keep these collared doves for the pot. Well, I've been very lucky so far in that I've had two easy pickups, which I'm very pleased about because collared doves are great to eat. Now, as I came around the corner then, before I took the shot there were actually a few out. So what I'm gonna do now is head back Back round, pick up the other dove, then head into the cattle shed, set up in there, and hope that one or two might come back. So, we've got a couple of doves in the bag, and it looks like there could be a good opportunity to add some more. I just need to find a discreet place where I can dig in within range of where I hope any incomers will land and this empty cattle shed looks like a promising spot. Well, I've said in the past that good hiding places often come ready-made on the farm, and this is one of them. This spot's produced the goods for us a few times in the past. Now, there's not a lot of cover here, but what we have got, while it's still fairly bright outside, is a lot of shade in here, which makes me pretty inconspicuous in here. Um, added to that, the fact that birds on the farm don't tend to be as wary as they are out on open ground because they're so accustomed to the constant disturbance from farm machinery, the livestock here, and the workers. I just need to be patient now. 
And with so many pests around the farmyard today, it isn't too long before I get another shot. I didn't have to wait too long for that one. Unfortunately though, that one has dropped straight into the ditch where I don't stand a chance of retrieving it, but I'm gonna stick it out here just a little bit longer, just in case there are any more willing to oblige. Apart from the odd wary corvid passing by, it's very quiet here now. I give it a while longer, but with nothing really happening in this area, it feels like I'm wasting my time. So I eventually decide on a change of plan. Well, I've given this spot a pretty fair crack, but apart from that quick first one from here, it seems pretty dead now and I just feel like we're wasting our time. So I'm gonna move on and try somewhere else. Something catches my eye as I walk around the corner, and it seems like that move could turn out to be a good idea. Well, a couple of rats actually dashed in then as I came round the corner past the calf pen. They came out from under the, under the feeders and down underneath the bales, so I think what I'll do, assuming they might come back out soon, is I'm going to dig in here for a while. If they come back out, we might get some shots. You might have noticed that there were rats darting around as I was setting up my seat, and it's not long before they're back out again. Well, there's plenty of activity here but these rats are very, very fidgety, which isn't unusual considering it's broad daylight. It's probably the case that this is gonna be a night vision job. On the roof, Nikki. Well, the rats might be giving us the run around, but that was a nice straightforward collared dove and another one for the pot. That last dove was an absolute sitter and a real stroke of luck. I just wish I was enjoying the same luck with the rats. waited flipping ages for that shot and I've gone and fluffed it by getting my hold over wrong. Now the rats are very twitchy tonight but I fluffed that shot good and proper. Um, but the problem I have been having is that they're just so edgy. I'm lingering waiting for Nicky to get on the shot. By the time he does they're darting away and we're just missing the chance so in all honesty I think the rats are going to have to wait until it gets dark when they're a bit less twitchy. So what I'm going to do now, move over into one of the main cattle sheds where we should find a few doves and get some shots. Well, there are still a few feral pigeons in here, but there are a lot less than when I started coming here a couple of years ago, which goes to show regular visits 
just chipping away at them. It has really knocked their numbers back now. Right, let's head across into the next building. Lightweight lace-up boots are all very well for stalking rabbits, but looking at the ground, I'm pleased I decided to wear my wellies on this job. These birds aren't particularly wary, so they're unlikely to spook before I pull the trigger, which means I can take my time to line up for a headshot. Well, I usually try to limit myself to only shooting the birds that are pitched right in in front of those steel joists. Now, that one was a little bit away from the joist, but it did still have the steel right back behind it which gave me a nice safe backstop with no risk of damaging the roof panels. After a couple of losses the ferals are getting flighty so I move into the shed to see if there are any stragglers offering a safe shot. Well, that's another feral pigeon, but it looks like the remainder of those that are left here have cleared off now and you can't really blame them. Now, it's been a bit of a funny session, but we have managed to bag four collared doves for the pot. We've got messed about a bit by those rats. And we've had a few feral pigeons too. And also, I think there's plenty to come back here for. We've noticed quite a few corvids moving, crows, rooks, and jackdaws. Now, in spite of what I said about farmyard pests not being quite so wary because they're accustomed to disturbance, that doesn't really apply to corvids and they just haven't given us a chance to get close enough to get shots today. So I reckon come back another day with a hide, some decoys and we'll have a proper go at those. Not a bad farmyard session there despite those tricky rats. And now it's the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News. Brought to you by the Air Gun Centre. A ban on lead ammunition has been categorically ruled out in the UK. The Environment Secretary Liz Truss has said that the evidence presented by the Lead Ammunition Group did not show that the impacts of lead ammunition were significant enough to justify changing current policy. This ends a five-year saga for the LAG, which saw half its members resign in disgust at the biased nature of its final report. Now, Basque says DEFRA's pro-lead response puts the antis back in their box. Team Air Arms has stormed the British Field Target Association Grand Prix Series scoreboard again with five top positions at round six in East Devon. Justin Wood won with 49 points and runner-up Jack Harris was just behind with 48. Air Arms England A team now top league one of the team tables, closely followed by Air Arms Wales. Designed for serious field target shooting, Hawk's new Sidewinder ED scope features interchangeable locking and resettable turrets with a choice of a quarter MOA, one eighth MOA, or one tenth M rad click value. Priced at a cool $849.99, it has a magnification range of 10 to 50 times and a 60mm objective lens. And finally, we'll see you this weekend at the Game Fair at Ragley Hall. With everything from clay shooting to gun dog displays, fishing to falconry, show jumping to ferreting, the Game Fair unites field sports lovers from all walks of life. And you'll be able to see your favourite shooting magazines there too. Find Sporting Rifle, Air Gun Shooter and Clay Shooting on Row E, Stand 1163H. That was the Air Gun Show News.
This week's review gun is one that I've been hoping to get my hands on since I first clocked it at the Iowa show in Germany back in March. It's the Cometer Orion BP, the bullpup version of the Orion that we tested just a few weeks ago. And just like its stable mate, it's very well priced. This one has a price tag of £599. The wooden stock is finished in black which gives a very tactical look especially when combined with its stubby proportions and that very distinctive fore-end grip. The angle of the grip can be adjusted at the press of a button to accommodate various holds. It's attached via an accessory rail so it can be removed or even replaced with a bipod or laser. Another standout stock feature is the rubberized drop-down pistol grip. It's contoured for a very comfortable hold and its soft touch, stippled finish feels great in the hand. Its sculpted profile makes for a very good fit and gives brilliant trigger attack. There's even some storage space in there, which you access via a sliding cover at the base. The Compact Orion BP measures around 70 centimetres and tips the scales at just over four kilos unscoped. It does feel a little hefty, but should still be manageable for shooters of most sizes. Overall handling is generally pretty good, although with a little more sculpting around the areas in contact with the shoulder and cheek, it would be even better. The metalwork is finished to a tidy standard, and I particularly like the fact that most of it has a matte, anti-glare finish to prevent any telltale flashes in the field. One thing to be mindful of is the Picatinny type scope rail. You're going to need to make sure you've got the right mounts to fit it. The cold hammer forged barrel, made in Cometa's own factory in Spain, should ensure decent accuracy. The chunky barrel shroud comes fitted and, apart from looking good, also does a reasonable job of stifling muzzle report. To fill the Orion BP, remove the cap from the front of the cylinder and connect to the quick fill inlet. A 200 bar fill gives more than 150 shots at close to the UK legal limit. There's a gauge on the underside of the stock to give a clear visual indication of air reserves. The 2.2 caliber BP has a 13 shot magazine and the 177 has a 17 shot mag. Just like with the SPR, you load it with the clear plate facing away from you, loading pellets tail end first and turning the plate clockwise to reveal another chamber for each pellet. When it's fully loaded, you return the plate back to its original position and it's good to go. The sturdy rear bolt cycles smoothly, but is still robust enough to cope with heavy-handed use. Its action cocks the gun, cycles the magazine, and probes home the next pellet. And because the rear of the magazine is clear, it's easy to keep an eye on how many pellets you've got left. The BP's trigger is a two-stage adjustable unit. The blade has a very pronounced curve to it, and its wide front edge gives plenty of feel. The first stage is very short, but the second stage is still predictable, so I haven't messed about with it. Like on the SPR version, the safety catch is located just in front of the trigger, which I don't think is the safest place to put it. Nonetheless, it is very positive. You draw it back to make the gun safe, and then push it forwards when you're ready to fire. So, that's a quick whiz through the Cometa Orion BP's key features. Let's put it to the test on some paper. Well, we've got a very light breeze today, but still managed a ragged group of about half an inch at 25 meters. Now, it's not gonna win you any matches, but that's perfectly good enough accuracy for hunting out to mid range. Now the gun did that today using Bisley Magnum pellets, but I dare say if we experimented with some others, we could probably even tighten it up a little bit more. So, if you're in the market for a bullpup PCP, the Cometa Orion BP is well worth a look. 
and coming in at under £600, it's certainly one of the more affordable ones out there. And that price includes a neat hard case. But the Orion BP doesn't feel like a cheap air gun. It's solidly built, boasts some great features, and it's a decent performer. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Yeah.